each group should have eight to 10 trials worth of data for the lab that we did yesterday and the day before on conservation momentum. This is data for one trial. We see time, position, acceleration, and velocity. If we want, we can delete the acceleration and velocity columns just to make it a little bit less confusing, although there's no reason why we have to. We can keep all four of those columns there if we want. The only two columns we want to plot, however, are the first one and the second one. That's time and position. To plot those two columns, we first want to highlight the second column, which is the variable that's going to appear on the y-axis of your graph. You're going to click on Insert, Scatter Plot, and then pick the first option. You see the general shape of the graph right now. But you notice on the x-axis, you get crazy numbers that don't make any sense. So what we want to do at this point is get the variable that we want on the x-axis so that the numbers do make sense. To do that, I'm going to select data. I'm going to edit. I'm going to select my series x values. Now I'm going to highlight my x column, my first column, which will be the x-axis of my graph. Keep clicking OK. Now I have a graph that has two axes that look right, that look the way they should. You can see now on this graph that there are three sections. The first section down here occurs before the cart started moving. That's irrelevant. Okay, we don't want to pay any attention to that data at all. So in fact, if we want to, okay, we might as well delete that data. Um, we've got all the way from 0, 0.0 seconds to 0 0.3 seconds. Okay, if we want to just delete those, we can do that. And then all of a sudden on that graph, we now only have two sections. Only the data we want appears now. However, we need to analyze these two sections separately. We need to find a line of best fit and the slope of both of these sections in order to get VI and VF. So what I want to do now is kind of make a mark, kind of distinguish between where VI is and where VF is. In other words, where the collision took place. You can see that we have a pretty uniform slope right here, and then it changes. So it looks like from about 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 seconds, 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 seconds, it looks like we have VI. This is before the collision took place. It looks like from 0 0.9 to 1.4, we have a different velocity. That's after the collision took place. It's going to be VF. So let's plot two separate graphs now, one for VI, one for VF, and let's get the statistics that we want off of it, the slope of each of them. Yeah, let's Select 0 0.4 to 0 0.8. Go through the same process as we just went through a minute ago. Insert a scatter plot. Okay, let's select our data for our x-axis again. And there's my graph. If I click on those dots, right click, add a trend line including this little box that says display equation on chart, we will get an equation that describes this graph. The equation is always in the form of y equals mx plus b, m being the slope. So the slope of that graph, the slope of the first interval that we have there, is 2.02. .02. In other words, vi for this trial is 2.02. .02. Now we want to get vf for this trial. To get vf, we're going to plot 0.9 to 1.4. So let's select our position data for that interval. Let's insert our scatter plot again. Let's select our data for the x-axis. Keep clicking OK until we have our graph that matches up with the data that we see on our table. Let's once again select that data, right click, add a trend line, display the equation on the chart, and click close. You can see the slope of this graph 
is 0.95. So the initial velocity was 2.02. The final velocity is 0.95. You do this 10 times, or however many trials you have. If you have eight trials, then do it eight times. When you do that, you should get something that looks like this. A bunch of VIs and a bunch of VFs. Now, I've made up this data for VI and VF. I've made it up so it's not going to be realistic. You're not going to get nice convenient numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4. But the way that we plot the graph is exactly the same regardless of what the numbers are. Let's go through this, this process now of plotting the graph that we're actually going to hand in. Okay, the other graphs, remember, were just to get your data. They're just to get VI and VF. This is the graph that you're going to hand in. Let's select my y-axis. Let's insert a scatter plot. Okay, it looks like my x-axis is correct here, but I'm going to select the x-axis data anyways, just in case. Hey, there's my graph. It's a perfect straight line. It's a perfect straight line because I made up the data. Yours won't be a perfect straight line, but it'll be good. It should be good. It should be almost a straight line. When you see that it's almost a straight line, you should draw a line of best fit. Let's display the equation. This one is y is equal to 3x. The slope of this graph would be 3. Now, this one's the one you're going to hand in. So it's not good enough to stop here for this graph. For this graph, we want a title. We want to label our axes. So what I want you to do at this point now is click on chart layouts. Pick the first one, layout one. That's going to put in your title, your axis title, and your x-axis title. Now all you have to do is type them in. Velocity final versus velocity initial. Okay, you can type those in on your axes as well. Don't forget your units, meters per second. Do the same thing on the x-axis, except it's velocity initial. Once again, the units, meters per second. Now, I just noticed, actually, when I did that, when I selected chart layout number one, it deleted my line of best fit. I'm not sure why I did that. It's not a big deal. All we have to do is create another line of best fit, display the equation on the chart, and I'm good to go. Does that make sense? Now, you want to copy this graph into Microsoft Word so that you don't have to print it and then you know, literally copy it with, or uh, cut it with scissors and paste it and so on. The easiest way to do it is simply click the graph, top left-hand corner, right-click, copy, go into Word, right-click, and or just use Control-V. And we're good to go. Done. Now, you've got to do it more times than me. Okay, you've got to do the first thing that I did ten times. This one, you only have to do once, just the same as me. Got it? That took nine minutes. If you're doing this and you're not stopping to explain it as I was, then it's going to take you significantly less than nine minutes to do this. You're going to have to repeat. It seems to take about a minute and a half per graph if you're doing it kind of real speed. So if you've got 10 graphs to plot, you're looking at about 15 minutes. Okay. I don't think that's the end of the world. You've got a little bit more analysis to do as well. So this isn't going to be a 15-minute write-up, but it's also not going to be a two-hour write-up either. Okay. Plot these graphs efficiently. That's the biggest part of the work. And then you should be able to be finished within a half an hour or so. All right. That's it.